Hey guys, Sean, CES 2012. Here I am with Sony, gonna discuss the uh, A77, A65, A55 that you guys have. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about the Sony cameras, asking me whether it's a good camera. Well, to be quite honest with you, I haven't put one in my hand, although I've been reading a lot about them. Actually, I take that back, I did put one in my hand, but I haven't been able to test it out in the field. So uh, I know it's not everybody's first choice, when looking for a DSLR is to think about Sony, but Sony is stepping up their game with their DSLRs, and here to talk about that is uh, one of Sony's reps. So I'm gonna have him talk about whatever camera you got in your hand, which is the A77 I'm looking at. Uh, this is the one everybody keeps asking me about. So right. what can you tell us about this camera? It's a really exciting new camera from Sony. Um, it uses something called a translucent mirror. Right. Instead of a moving conventional mirror, uh, the mirror stays fixed, it doesn't actually move. Um, the advantage is that the autofocus sensor receives the light always and it simultaneously the imaging sensor receives the light. The benefit to the end user is real-time autofocus whether you're shooting videos sure. or stills at 12 frames per second. Our entry level model is 7 frames per second. Wow. Um, this model is 12 frames per second, the A65 does 10 frames per second, that's a $900 camera. Um, on paper, if you look at that against other manufacturers, sure. it blows it away just that one spec. And then you add the amazing image quality, sure. the 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It's in three of, the, three of our new lineup cameras. Um, Sony has a lot of knowledge in digital cameras. Sure. We've been doing it a long time. And yeah, of course, there's a, a tendency to lean and gravitate towards Canon and Nikon. Sure. Um, but we're really taking a, a different approach and stepping sure. out of the box and considering new technologies and new ways to improve the DSLR experience. Sure. Now, I've got two questions. Now, one being that this camera shoots at 12 frames a second. What is the buffer time behind it? I mean, I know with Nikon and Canon, their frames per second is extremely fast, and those images are almost like right up, you know, coming up right away. What what can you expect from shooting at 14 frames a second on this camera? How long will it take me for to review my photos after? Sure. Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of uh, different un details there. Sure. This is a $1,400 camera body, sure. does 12 frames per second. Sure. <clears throat> you can shoot about 17 frames in a burst. Now, um, the buffer will have a recovery time. Sure. Even if it's blinking though, I can continue to shoot. I just won't necessarily get the 12 okay. frames per second. Okay. The very fastest Class 10 SD cards and the newest uh, UHS yeah. cards uh, will clear the buffer up to three times faster. Sure. So you can get a lot of great images, get that decisive moment. Sure. Now granted, at 24 megapixels, that's a lot of hard drive space. So um, it's a good thing that gigabytes are affordable these days. Right, it is getting cheaper. Now, does this take a eight CF uh, SD cards? It's, uh, it takes, it's a single slot. It, you can either put an SD card in there or you can put in the Sony memory stick style card. Oh, okay. Oh, it's pretty versatile. Right. So you got more options. Uh, unfortunately, Canon only allows you the CF card, you know, now with the, uh, 60Ds and T3Is, all those, you, you get your SD cards. So for me, CF cards, they're pretty expensive still. So they haven't really dropped that much in price. Uh, one last question, we're going back to the uh, autofocusing. Now, how well does it work at all f-stops? I mean, from your f-stop 2.8 to 16, how good is that autofocus? Is it going to track you pretty well? I know the Canon, it does a pretty de decent job of using the live view mode, but if I'm jumping around all over the place, I'm moving back and forth, it's not going to do that great of a job tracking me. So how does this compare to that and how well does it perform across those uh, f-stops? Sure, that's a really good question. Now when you're shooting live video um, with autofocus on our camera, it's always the aperture is going to be um, wide open. Right. So you can't actually autofocus with the aperture at f16. Okay. Um, the AF sensor isn't receiving enough light and that's the nature sure. of the beast. Now what is totally unique and different from our camera is the fact that with that translucent mirror, we can track that moving subject with the same style autofocus. This camera does not know what contrast detect is. That's what the other manufacturers do in live view. When our camera's in live view, it performs exactly the same as if you have your eye up to the viewfinder. Right, uh, a lot of these consumers that are jumping into DSLRs want to have the DSLR quality, but want the simplicity of a point and shoot. So I, there is always going to be that learning curve when jumping to a DSLR, but I know Sony does make it a lot easier to transition from a point and shoot into a DSLR. So I appreciate you spending a little bit of time talking to me about this. All right, take care. All right, guys, catch up a little bit later. Thanks for watching.